Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. Today we're going to go over an interesting new feature in the newer versions of KiCad. And this is actually documented by a forum member, uh, Dave Vandenbout, over on the KiCad Info forums. Uh, but basically, you can now pull in GitHub libraries into KiCad so that basically as someone updates the GitHub library, it will then get pulled in dynamically. Uh, so there's some logistical questions with that, but today we're just going to go over how to actually get it in there, and then once you do, how to you know where to find the files and everything like that. So let's pull up uh, the virtual machine. I already have that running. Got that going. Okay, so I have uh, well, I had a terminal going. Uh, I'm going to open up KiCad here. I did give it another couple processors on my uh, virtual machine. This was a little sluggish in the past, so maybe that'll help you if you're having the same problem. This is BZR5322, so that is something to note. Uh, and what we're going to do here is actually go and look at the location of where these things live in the first place, because I actually I was, actually wasn't sure about that. Now, if you wanted to go in and add a new, now this is going to be for footprint library, so this isn't actually this is you know the schematic stuff, so this is actually not relevant, but it's going to tell us the library location. So if you wanted to add a foot, uh, uh, sorry, a schematic symbol library, you could do that here. These are all the default ones. You could also go in and add. And then in here we see there's other ones in here. There's another question on the forum about that, how to actually add these in. You can go in and add in new libraries that aren't actually there right now. So if I hit Nordic and then I scroll down, then Nordic should be in here. So now we have Nordic here. And then if I hit A, you should see Nordic in the list somewhere, wherever it would be. Uh, that didn't look like a take. Um, anyways, <coughs> uh, I did add the STM32, though. That was another one that was in there. So I'm not sure about Nordic. That's kind of weird. Um, anyways, let's go back and look at that again. So if we set active libraries, if we hit add, this is actually the location, user, local, share, KiCad library. So what we're going to do is pull up terminal and go to cd slash user, local, share, oh, uh, Sorry, yeah, share KiCad. Let's just go to that folder and then we'll see what's in there. So in here there's demos, internot, <laughs> library, modules, and template. So the, in library, we should see uh, some of these ones that we were just talking about. So these are all the libraries that are local to here, right? If we go back out, CD modules, we should see all of the footprints. These are the .brd, uh, stuff like that. Uh, actually, that's modules so that's a little bit different but what we really want to do is templates so if we go to cd template yeah that's kind of hard to see but let's space it out like that uh, let's do that one more time uh, ls there we go okay so we see there's a bunch of different things in here and basically what we want to do is this file right here is actually what we want to modify um, and so if we go in and just take a look at that, so sudo nano fplib. Now this is actually already modified on my end. I just I just did it and then I made the video. But basically it's going to look like something similar to this. And actually, eh, I guess we can go back, go back out and see if there's other ones. So if we go into uh, sudo nano fplib dot for eagle. See, this looks a little bit different here, but this is going to go and try and pull in other files. I haven't tried this one, so I don't actually know. I don't know how this works. Um, but what we're going to do is, base, it, it, it looks like this initially, and we're going to switch it over to that other format that you saw previously in that in the main fplib type, uh, main fplib table. So we're going to go and edit that. This is actually from that same forum post that I mentioned. Uh, Basically, there's a link here. This is to uh, to Dave's to Dave's uh, version. There's other ones out there. There's a, I think an official one down here as well, so you can go and pull that one in. Uh, and then basically, once you have this in here, now there's two versions. There's the uh, read only, and then there's the one that allows you to write. Basically, uh, if you modify it, then you you can uh, modify it locally. But now we can go in and see if these actually exist in our build. Now remember these are footprints. So and you know some people don't like how the footprints are done in uh ooh, 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 sorry in KiCad but uh I think it's okay. Uh, <laughs> basically you, you separate out your 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 symbols from your footprints and then you allow them to, to uh s go 
glue them together later when you're actually in between layout and and schematic or schematic and layout really. Uh, I actually like that a lot because then it allows you to have a lot fewer footprints in your library. You don't need a you know for every resistor value you don't need to then assign 0402 1K resistor 0402 2K resistor. Basically, it's just resistor value and then everything gets assigned to the 0402. So we'll see that in the library here. Okay, so if I switch over to KiCad. Uh, okay, so we're still in the layout or in the sch uh, schematic program rather. I'm going to close this stuff out. I'm going to switch windows here to the launcher. Open up the uh, PCB new, which is the layout program. Uh, this is the Bench Buddy project, the one we've been using. But now I'm going to go in and actually hit uh, preferences, library tables, and now we can see all of these uh, these different tables in here now. Again, this is going to take some more uh, logistical looking, <laughs> looking at uh, looking at these in detail. But basically, these are in here now. And what we want to do is basically cancel out of here. I want to actually go in and look at the libraries themselves. So we're going to li the module viewer or footprint viewer. Okay, and now we see that these are the the same the same libraries that we had in that file. So if you look at that file again, we see uh, fuse holders and fuses. How about that? Fuse holders and fuses. All right, and now we can see all of the different ones that are in here. Now these are basically ready to go footprints. You know, I I highly highly recommend that you always check your footprints, right? But these are different uh, types. Basically, you see that these are optimized for for wave soldering, for reflow soldering, for hand soldering. Basically, these are these are now specified libraries that you can use, and that when you go and do a CV PCB association, which we'll do in a second, you can actually now use these and optimize for what you need. So uh, other fuse holders here, you know, just just a wide range of things that you would have to go in and modify yourself if you really wanted, if you really, uh, if you really had all these different types, you'd have to go and do this yourself. So uh, like I said, there's always risk in using someone else's footprints, but this is a great starting point where you can go and verify and then print stuff out later doing paper, uh, paper printouts, stuff like that. Uh, so going through, it's interesting seeing a lot of this stuff. Especially for things like uh, connectors are always connectors are always weird, right? So like an entire M Molex library, right? That's that's useful in and of itself, right? So and then as as these get built up over time, people are always asking me, you know, where where can I find libraries now? Now that they live on GitHub, it's like, well, okay, that's you know, this is this is great for for doing designs and being able to get stuff faster. So. Uh, that is <laughs> how these look. I highly recommend you go through and check them out. Make sure you're comfortable with them before you start using them in your designs. But uh, I think it's really interesting. Now, if we go back through, uh, if I wanted to go in, uh, switch to KiCad again. And if I wanted to, let me switch to the launcher. If I wanted to re-associate, so let's do that real quick. Uh, that's a library editor. That's weird. They switched that button on me. I did not expect that. Okay, so we have to launch them here, apparently. Uh, which one is it? This one. So this is CVPCB. This is what actually allows you to do the association between the two. Looks like it's taking a little while. Hey, look at that. Uh, we'll say yes. This is a uh, an old an old project, so it's fine. But basically, some of these actually didn't get associated over anyway, so that's a good situation here. Okay, so now, now we have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff here. Uh, so if I hit SM0805, basically it starts filtering based on that. And now we should see there's SM0805, SMD0805. I can just go in and redo it. And then, you know, same, same as it was in the old version of KiCad, if you just double click down, you can start uh, replacing all of these at once. Now, this is actually going to mess up a lot of my layout, but... Uh, I think at this point, if I was going to transition, you know, uh, KiCad versions, then I would probably make that make that jump. So uh, basically, you know, a lot of this flow is the same. The only thing that's really different now is the the KiCad libraries are, are, can now be tied to GitHub. And uh, like I said, we'll talk about the logistics of that later because that could mean things for when you're online versus offline and what happens if some you're using some external library and someone changes something. But uh, for now, I think it's really interesting, and I suggest you try it out. That's all for now. Good luck with your libraries, and thanks for watching.